Hi guys, uh, this is on site. Uh, a little update about the computer again. The water cooler failed, so I ended up putting this back, which is this top one. Uh, temperatures were not ideal, but it, certainly livable and doable. Uh, personally, I always prefer to keep my PCs for longer. And that's why I went with this. Sorry for the finger, this bad boy. I'm gonna install and show you how to install. Not everything uh, in the process, but the key parts and the things that are most important, I would say. So I removed this one. This one I was getting with the PBO disabled. I was getting uh, in 4.1 gigahertz. I was getting around. Uh, 42 to 46 degrees Celsius uh, idle and on load 70, 72 maybe which is, isn't is really bad with a cooler like this it looks like a Hyper 4212 I think it looks like this pretty similar put it, I'm gonna put it away Next thing you could do, if you're someone not used to this, you could remove the GPU and the RAM to allow some clearance, because this thing's pretty big. Uh, I think it's gonna fit in my case. Um, the only issue, issue is gonna be the height, because it's not a deep case, it's a small, small case, it's a, it is a pre-build. Okay, we're back. First thing you want to do and make sure is to remove the thermal paste. I had to reuse thermal paste basically the previous time because I ran out. That's why it looks messy like this. <laughs> it's hard to see right now, but I'm gonna remove it and then you need to remove these. Those are OEM brackets they come with. These AM4 socket bottom boards. Let's remove these four. And there's a back plate bit underneath on the other side of the, the board. This back plate you want to keep for the mounting of the Noctua, actually. So at this point, I removed like half of the OEM brackets that come with it these uh, ones. I cleaned the CPU and uh, from thermal paste you don't want to keep it. Uh, it comes with thermal paste exactly for that and their, their thermal paste is pretty decent so uh, there's one way you could like mount it without um, having to go behind the, the case which is kind of annoying if you're alone. Uh, you could like place these because technically to install it you have to put these put one of these brackets you could put the bracket right away start screwing it so you can remove this and that would like hold the back plate meanwhile you're unscrewing this one you know it's one trick you could do to skip yourself the trouble of removing this other side panel, but I won't do that. I want to do it properly without ch chances of like uh, tightening something too early and not even. So I'm gonna be back with the back plate and the these started to screw. So what I did is I put this one already in. So when I unscrew this one, the bracket, the back plate won't just uh, it won't just fall off, which is a big inconvenience. Um, I'm gonna remove that screw right there. This one, I'll remove it and uh, then. My zoom is pretty good actually on this cell phone. Uh, I just noticed. 
Uh, I'm gonna remove that one and then do the same process for this as I did with this one. Just I'll just leave it back, install it, flip the case again, and be able to like screw it properly and install the cooler. Found here. No. Found there. Found there. Okay. So the bracket, the brackets are installed with the thermal paste. It looks like uh, a turd, but it's gonna do the work. Uh, I'm used to putting this on. Uh, not really on these uh, bigger edges. They have a, a bigger surface to cover and be thermal pasted, I guess. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna be back with the cooler installation. I'm gonna tight, tight those screws and the X pattern and just uh, until it's tight enough. You don't need to like be uh, too strong on it, strong arm it, I guess. So ideally, ideally, you want to install it like this, line it up with the the pins in the middle of the bracket. Uh, as you can line it up, you just squeeze it a bit so the paste settles a bit, and then you just screw on with the what they gave you. They give those little longer little screwdriver things. I'll be back with it installed, and uh, when I start to screw it on. Yep, that's pretty. Uh, that's a tight fit. <laughs> Don't mind this fan, it's, it's really dirty. I'm gonna clean it up. Now you just screw uh, each one of them at a time so it, it settles evenly. Just like you do with the brackets that are underneath. Simple as that. Also, what's great about these uh, these screws? They just like they have springs, so they won't they won't let you like screw too much or uh, over tighten. Now it's screwed on. I just need to take. The fans. Uh, this one. You just clamp them like this. You want to put them like so they peek out a bit, like this or so. Come back to you guys when they're both installed. And also, I just want to point something out. Your clearance is pretty good actually. Not the worst, or the best, but it does well. These uh, Vengeance Rams are pretty. Those are Vengeance Pro Corsair. They're pretty tall, so. And it still carries it. Okay, so now we're back <laughs> with everything mounted. As you can see, it doesn't fit. <laughs> So I'll just like half close the panel and uh, put it close to this <laughs> this big thing. Uh, I mounted another fan to take care from the front to give a bit of a breeze to the GPU and uh, get the air going that way while going doing a bit of air this way inside. Intake, 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 exhaust, and these are exhaust. Oh. I'm gonna see what it, what the results are, but to be honest, uh, as I like remove a lot of stuff in this case, it's not it's not more um, less heat soak prone, I, I would say. 
the air is moving a bit better there's less stuff to like block everything I'll be back when I get to the computer and start it off uh, I'll uh, record it okay now we're back to assemble back together not the best cable management but I expect to work on it uh, pretty soon I know I put the low Knock to a logo inversed. It doesn't change anything. This cooler is made to go on both sides. As it's symmetrical. Uh, down below, it looks like this. Some ugly colored wires. And that's pretty much it. So, not the perfect build, but uh, I think it should work really well with that, that cooler. I might add a, another Noctua fan if, uh, depending on the temperatures again. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna update you guys soon on it. For the temperatures, I'm gonna do it in this video a bit later. Uh, in the next clip, actually. Okay, guys, I'm back. It's all assembled. I uh, had some issue with my RAM for some reason. It didn't want to start at uh, 3200 uh, megahertz, so I had to like move some of the sticks uh, so that, that the motherboard would like reset to the uh, like lowest megahertz, so it could start. That it did, and right now I'm idling at. 33 Celsius right now, and that's on core temp. Uh, this, line, this software is uh, showing higher readings because, like, if you look there, this shows the hottest uh, core. So I'm 32, 33. Right now, in my room, it's about 20, 22 degrees, I'd say. So that's really good. Actually. Uh, went down by. Before I was idling at 45, 46. And even when I had the water cooling uh, I, IAO, uh, when it was running well, uh, I weren't getting uh, that low uh, temperatures. I was at 35, 36, and now it's uh, even lower. Same, uh, I'm at 4100 mirrors, 1.1 volt ish. I've always been using that. Uh, I don't want to use the PBO booster, it's, uh, I think it's, yeah, it's useless, this thing. It just makes it warm for nothing. Uh, so yeah. I prefer to have it cool and uh, run for a long time. Like my previous uh, processor I had before. So that, I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, had some useful information. For those who uh, might be uh, beginners or people who haven't installed this kind of stuff before? It's really simple. There's they come with instructions and stuff, so you can just use that in, uh, as a, a reference. Uh, besides that, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you feel like, uh, leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and see you on the next video, guys. Peace.